Hello. I'd like to talk to you about how do you select a good sample. Now, some things to consider here. Number one, you need to think about your sample selection. Now, if you're doing random selection, let's bring up random selection. Random sampling or random selection, every person in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. So let's draw some people here. Here's his head, body. Let's put some arms on. Head, body, and more. Uh, let's have that guy wave. So there's our green people. Let's draw some red people. And I'll draw in that red person. Okay, here we have some more people. And let's have some. It's supposed to be yellow. Some blue people. Okay. There we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. Nice of them to show up. And let's say this is our population. Population means everybody. So if we have ten people and we want to give everybody an equal chance, and let's say we're going to take a sample of five, which means every one of these people should have a 50% chance of being selected. We have our population ten, we have choosing five, so everybody has the same chance of being selected. We could also have something called stratified sampling. And stratified sampling means a population sorted into relevant subgroups or strata. Sounds like geology, doesn't it? And then people are randomly chosen from each group. So let's say we have one sample, which would be, let's say we're really interested in these green people. And so I might, you know, if there's only three of them, I might just talk to everybody. But if this is like 3,000, I might just, you know, maybe too costly to select everybody. The more people I select, the closer I am to be um, to the population. But so I'll randomly select from these people. Let's say I select um, in this case. Um, if it's small enough, it'd be 100%. Let's say I choose two-thirds. So I select two of them. And then let's say I want to compare them with the population. Well, they're part of, part of my population, so I might choose five of, uh, of the overall population. So I'm comparing these three to everybody. That would be one form of stratified, stratified sampling. Or I might be comparing this group to this red group of people. Our next case that I'd like to talk to you about is sample selection. or rather selection bias. And selection bias, there's three major reasons, at least I think there's three major reasons why you could have a bias selection. Bias means it may not be really representative of your population, which is kind of sad. I kind of like to have it more closer to our population because we're trying to get it as truthful as possible. So likelihood of selection, the first one right here. Some people are more likely to be selected than others. You've probably seen a picture of uh, President Harry Truman holding up a newspaper article that says, Dewey wins. Well, Dewey was his opponent, and the poll said that Dewey was going to win the election. And they had done the poll based on telephone surveys, but richer people were more likely to have telephones than poorer people, which meant that the people who were more likely to vote for Truman were less likely to be selected. So let's say here we have, here's our group of Americans who are likely to vote. And we have, let's say, these people over here are the ones who, or actually let's just say these people are the ones with telephones. And let's say um, these people over here don't have telephones. Well, if I only select people based on their telephones, I only get this group over here. And so that may not be representative of the overall population. Likewise, if I'm doing a uh, study looking at uh, uh, organ transplants, people may be getting a new liver. Well, the people they're more likely to choose are the people who are relatively healthier, not that healthy, because otherwise, why would they get an organ transplant? But if you're really sick, you're likely to die in surgery. And so we might say, oh, look, these people who get organ transplants tend to do much better than people who don't. Well, is it because of the organ transplant or is it because of selecting 
people who are who are healthier. So a lot of times you need to sp take some time to think about well, how were people selected in the two groups, not just in surveys but in other situations. Likelihood of responding. Well, some people are don't answer surveys. Well, if they're the same as everybody else, then it may not have much effect. But if they have, you know, so let's say this group have very different views than everybody else, but they don't answer surveys. We might think that people are like th these people's viewpoint, but there's this group over here we're not selecting. We're not selecting, let's say, these green people. And so we could very well get wrong answers. And so be careful in terms of likelihood of responding. And we're assuming, obviously, that we have some some differential or some diversity in opinions between different people. You know, part of it may be based on gender, it could be race, but a lot of times, just in any group, you have a lot of differences in opinion. And so you want to make sure that you um, randomly select people, and uh, people have are likely to respond. And likewise, some people may not be as honest in their answers. Um, so if people are less likely to be honest, and whether they don't want to look bad or they just they want to do something else, so they just give you an answer. They, um, you know, so let's say you know, we have you know a couple of people here who are not honest. Well, we're going to get different results. Now, if everybody has exactly the same opinion, let's say yes, we have some diversity of people, but nobody has any difference in opinion. In which case, if everybody has the same opinion, you could choose one person, and that person would have the same opinion as everybody else. But obviously, we're assuming there's some variation, and because of that variation, it really helps to have more people uh, responding. And in fact, the more people respond, the smaller the error you're making. And small samples tend to have more variation, and, and also are more likely to be wrong. So if I, you know, let's take a really small sample. Let's take this one person right here. It's like you're going to just select me. If we only select this one person, well then, you know, if that person's right at the mean, no problem. But the likelihood is this person, there's a lot of variation in choosing that person, so there tends to be a lot more variation in, in you know, our viewpoint about what's really going on. So let's go on to margin of error. And in this case, let's choose this color right here. And let me bring it all up here. Okay, and hopefully you can read this green. Um, but let's there, let's make it that color. I kind of like that look. And margin of error. Margin of error lets you know that the, uh, what the upper and lower bounds of the results are. So 52% of the voters favor candidate A and 48% favor candidate B. And the margin of error is 4, and that stands for 4%. Well, 52 minus 4 is 48, and 52 plus 4 is 56. And if I do it for 48, 48 minus 4 is 44, 48 plus 4 is 52. So those would be our, our margins. So in this case, they overlap. So notice, you know, this 44 goes down into this group and this 56, uh, or actually I guess I should say this 52% uh, uh, goes up in here. So they, they overlap with each other. In fact, let's draw this overlapping. So let's see if I, let me pick on my pen tool right here. So here's our, um, 48, that's supposed to be a four. And here's our, um, 52. on this group and this one goes down the 52 is 48 or uh, 52 is 48 to 56 so it goes from right about here to here 
and our 48 group goes from 44, so let's say down here up to 52. So in this area right here, the two groups overlap. Now, in the overlapping, our results are probably looking, assuming they're normal results, they probably look, you know, here's our normal distribution, so most of them are going to be right about 48. And over here, let's change colors for our Let's make it uh, green. So let's say here's our 52 right here. Doesn't want to write for me. So here's our 52, but 52, that's eh, not quite dark enough, is it? So 52 right there. And there's results right here. You know, I'm like it here. So it may be that they're ahead, but we have all this area right here where they overlap. So we may not be able to say that 52 is greater than 48 because our results could be 48 um, to 56 for A and 44 to 52. So statistically, they may be dead, dead even. So be careful. And look, you need to consider that margin of error, that selection bias, and uh, randomly choosing people. Thank you.